I'm going to show what little I know about signing git commits on a Mac with GPG with a YubiKey without using dev, just setting everything up manually. Um, there are four main steps to this. Firstly, we need to generate a GPG key to use for signing. Then we need to tell Git to sign commits with that key. Then we need to tell GitHub about the key so it can use it to verify the commit signatures. And then we need to move that key onto the YubiKey so that it's physically stored on the YubiKey and signing will only work when the YubiKey is inserted. So to get started, I need to install GPG. Uh, fortunately, that's in Homebrew, so I can just do brew install GPG. There we go. Um, so now if I ask it to list my keys, uh, you can see I don't have any keys. Um, so I'm gonna generate a key by using GPG full generate key. Now, I'm not a cryptography expert, so I'm just gonna use the defaults here. I think the default these days for GPG is an EDSA key using the curve 25519 elliptic curve, all of which is supported by GitHub and supported by YubiKey, so I trust it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna accept the default here, ECC sign in encrypt, uh, select the default curve. Um, GitHub advises setting the key to not expire, so I'm gonna accept the default there as well to follow their guidance. Yes, that is correct. And now I have to enter my user information. Um, for the email address, I'm gonna put in the same email address that I use on my Git commits, and it's important that that matches up. Uh, no comment. Okay. All right, and now I need to enter a passphrase. There we go, it's generated a key. Uh, so now if I do GPG list keys, this time you can see that a key exists. There's actually two keys here. There's the primary one, which is this one, that's showing these capabilities S and C. Now S is the signing capability, that's what we're gonna use. Um, C is the certify capability, and that is used to certify this sub key here. So we've got a secondary key that's got this E capability, and that's uh, the ability to encrypt. I don't think that we actually need that for what we're doing, but GPG generates this subkey by default, so we're just gonna roll with it. So now I've got this GPG key, I can use it to sign a commit. Um, I've got a empty git repo set up here, uh, so I can demonstrate signing commits. So let's say git commit, um, if I say GPG sign, that will tell Git to try and use GPG to sign this commit. Um, and for demo purposes, I'll just make this an empty commit so that I don't have to mess around changing any files. Uh, and then the message on this commit is going to be, this is a signed commit. Now this should work, but when I hit enter, you can see that it fails. It says error GPG failed to sign the data. The reason why that's failed is because GPG is trying to prompt for the passphrase at this point and it doesn't know how to show that prompt to me. Um, there are a couple of different ways that you can solve this. If like me, you're a command line user of Git and you just wanna use the command line passphrase prompt, then you just need to do export GPG TTY equals and then tell it to find your TTY here. Um, if this GPG TTY environment variable is set, then GPG will be able to use the sort of terminal style uh, prompt to ask you for your passphrase. And obviously you would need to put this in your bash RC or your ZSHRC or whatever so that this was always set. Uh, let's have a look. So if I try again, Let's try this again. Uh, now this time, when I try to make this commit, we should see, there you go, GPG's now popped up this little sort of textual passphrase entry screen where I can enter my passphrase. And now that's uh, made a signed commit. If I do git show, uh, show signature, it will show not only the details of the commit, but also the GPG signature. So it's saying good signature from, from Stuart. Um, if you prefer a graphical user interface for this, or if more likely, if you use Git integration in VS Code or some other GUI tool, then you might not want that terminal integration. Um, there is, the, the program that's prompting for that passphrase is called pin entry, and there's a graphical user interface version of pin entry for the Mac, so I'll just show that to you as well. So if you prefer, you can brew install pin entry hyphen Mac, and when that finishes installing, it says to you that you need to add some configuration to a particular file. So let me just do that. I'll copy 
this line and echo it into this configuration file, this gpgagent.conf. And I believe I need to just restart gpgagent uh, to get it to reread that file. Um, so now let's try making a commit again. Uh, let's say this is another signed commit. Now this time when I hit enter, it pops up a sort of a graphical version of that uh, passphrase entry thing, which is probably what you would want to see if you were doing this in VS Code or something. If I enter my passphrase there, again, you know, it's generated a signed commit. And if I do git show, show signature again, this is another signed commit. And you can see that one's got a, got a valid signature on it. Um, obviously, it's a little bit inconvenient to have to provide that minus minus GPG sign every single time you make a commit. So what we really want to do here is tell git using git config, and I'll make this a global configuration, that I want commit.gpg sign to be true by default. So now if I make a commit just in the normal way, um, although I'm going to allow it to be empty again, just to keep things simple, uh, this commit is signed by default. And then again, if I show that, you can see this commit is signed by default. I didn't have to say, specify minus minus GPG sign because now Git is just configured to do that. So if I now Git push, push those commits up to GitHub, let's go and have a look at how they look in the GitHub web interface. All right, so here's the repo up on GitHub. Um, if I click on this most recent commit, you can see that it's showing as unverified. So this unverified badge means that GitHub has picked up, recognized the fact that there is a, a signature on this commit, but it isn't able to verify it because it doesn't know anything about that GPG key I just generated. So it's not able to check that this signature was generated by my key. So what we need to do here is tell GitHub about what my, what my PGP key is. Um, the way you do that is by going into uh, settings here and then there's SSH and GPG keys in the sidebar and then down here you can see there's a button that says new GPG key and now I can just enter a GPG key in here now to do that I need to have copied my key from somewhere and fortunately you can ask GPG to show you exactly what you need to paste in there so on the command line, if I say GPG minus minus export, and I'm also gonna say minus minus armor because that is, armor is the name of the sort of plain text key format that uh, that GitHub is expecting to see here. Otherwise it'll export it in like a binary format and that's much more difficult to copy and paste successfully. Um, it's good practice to specify exactly what key it is that you're trying to export here. You can just use the, for example, the email address on the key to identify it. In this case, I've only got one key, so it would have just exported that one by default, but this is just a good habit to get into with GPG, I think. So if I export this key, so there we go. It's showing me this begin PGP public key block. If I copy all of that, I can paste that in and hit add GPG key. Now this is showing up as a GPG key associated with my account. And then if I go back to that commit signing demo and look at this commit again, now we can see that it's showing as verify because not only is there a signature on this commit, but now GitHub knows that it's been signed with the key that I have said is, is my key. So it matches, you know, the signature on the commit matches one of the keys of the person who authored the commit. So we've generated a key, we've told Git to use that key to sign our commits, we've told GitHub about that key. Now the final thing to do is to move that key onto the YubiKey so that it doesn't live on my laptop anymore. It's actually physically stored on that YubiKey and if that key's not inserted, I won't be able to sign any commits with it. Now, this is kind of optional, but I would suggest that you change the default pin on your YubiKey because the YubiKey ships with just like a default pin um, and it's gonna use that to every time you insert the YubiKey into a machine, you have to enter the pin in order to sort of unlock it and allow access to the private key that's stored on it. Um, there's probably nothing wrong with leaving it set to the default pin, but I just feel a little bit more comfortable um, changing it from the default. So I'm gonna show you how to do that if you want to, um, but I'm not giving you any advice either way about whether that's something that you are supposed to do or not. 
Um, but if you want to do it, here's what you do. You use GPG minus minus card edit. Um, so GPG actually has the ability to talk to the YubiKey directly. You can see here it's showing some information about the YubiKey. Um, you can see down here it's saying the signature key and encryption key and authentication key are all none, so it doesn't actually have any keys stored on it yet. Um, the thing that I'm going to do is go into admin mode and then say I want to change the password. Um, this is how you change the pin and the admin pin. Now, the, the difference between these two things is that the pin is just the sort of the normal pin that you have to type in to unlock access to the key. The admin pin is the thing that you have to enter when you want to do things like change the key that is stored on the YubiKey. Um, so ideally, you would change both of these pins. That's what I'm going to do right now, just for demonstration purposes. So first, I'll change the regular pin. Um, you have to enter the existing one. The default for this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'll set that to something different so that it's more secure. Okay, and now I can do the same thing to change the admin pin. Uh, the default for this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see, it's slightly more secure because it's got two more digits in it. Um, I will set that to something else. Okay, so now I've set the uh, I've set the pins to be different, uh, so I feel a little bit more safe. So now that I've updated the default pins, now I'm ready to move my GPG key onto the YubiKey itself. Um, the way to do that is to, again, use the GPG command line tool. Um, I want to, this is a point to briefly caution you that once you move the key onto the YubiKey, you then can't move it off again. It's kind of a one-way process. Uh, there's no way to get a copy of the private key off of the YubiKey once you've made this move, as far as I know. Um, so once you've moved the key onto the YubiKey, if you then lose that YubiKey, you just have to trash everything and start over, or delete your old key, or you know, figure out how you're going to cope with that situation. So this is really the final point at which, if you did want to take some kind of backup of your private key, this is the really the last point you can do it. And so again, I just want to show you how to do that. Um, if you want to take a backup of your key, you have to do GPG export secret key, uh, again, in the armor format, probably and again specify what key it is that you're exporting. Um, if you do this, uh, okay, I need to enter my passphrase. That makes sense. So this is an export of my private key. This is just for demo purposes, don't worry, I'm gonna delete all these keys <laughs> when I'm done with this video. Um, so this represents like the secret portion of my key. Um, so if you wanted to keep this safe, then at this point, for example, you could print this out onto a piece of paper and lock it away in a safe. I mean, if you save this onto the hard drive of your laptop, then you've sort of defeated the whole purpose of what it is that we're doing here. So be extremely careful if you do choose to back this up somewhere. I would suggest you make it an offline backup on a piece of paper or, yeah, you know, on a USB drive that you do keep in a physically secure location or something. Um, but I just wanted you to be aware that this is how you do it if you do want to. So assuming that you've either taken a backup of your secret key or you're relaxed about the fact that you don't need to, now we can go ahead and actually move this so that it's physically stored on the YubiKey. And the way we do that is by GPG edit key. Again, I'll just, out of habit, I'll specify exactly which key it is that I want to edit. Um, so this is showing me, again, these kind of, uh, my secret key. You can see there are kind of two parts to this. There's, uh, there's this primary key that's used for signing and certifying, and then there's this sub key here that's been certified by the primary key that's used for encrypting. And I'm actually gonna move both of these onto the onto the YubiKey as part of this, just for the purposes of cleanliness, I suppose. Um, so what you need to do is first say, I wanna work with key zero, which is that first one, that primary key. Um, and then there's a command called key to card that allows you to move that key the, the secret part of that key onto the YubiKey. So really move the primary key. Yes, I'm serious about that. Um, where do you want to store the key? Um, so this is asking you which slot on the YubiKey to use to store this key. Because this primary key is used for signing, I'm going to say one, please make it the signature key. Um, and I'm going to have to type 
my passphrase in order to do that. And as you can see, I also need to enter the admin pin because I'm doing like an administrative operation on the YubiKey. So I'll enter my new secret admin pin there. There we go. Okay, so now it's moved that key onto the YubiKey. Now I'm going to choose the other key, I think, key one. You can see this little asterisk has appeared here to show that I'm now talking about this sort of sub key that I have. And again, I'm going to say key to card to move that key onto the card. It's only offering me the encryption key slot for that key, which is correct. Um, I need to enter my passphrase again. I need to enter my admin pin again. And there we go. It's now moved that onto the key. So if I quit, save changes, yes, please. Now, it's not immediately obvious that anything has changed. If I say GPG list keys, I can still see my keys as normal, but if I do GPG list secret keys, then in this slightly cryptic output here, this greater than sign is indicating that the secret part of these public private key pairs is now stored off this device. It's stored on the YubiKey, um, and so it's not gonna be available to me unless I have that key inserted. So let's try making a commit again. Um, allow empty. Uh, message, this commit was signed with the YubiKey. Now, this is my first time I've been signing something with the key that's on the YubiKey, so I have to enter the pin. This is the non-admin pin that I set earlier. And there we go. Uh, that commit has been created and it's been signed, and this time it's used the key that was physically stored on the YubiKey rather than being stored on my laptop. Now, perhaps the best way for me to prove there's something useful going on here is to show you what happens if I physically remove the YubiKey from my laptop. So let me just oh, pull that out and let's try making that commit again. And now it says, please insert the card with serial number, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I just say, okay, it's just gonna keep prompting for that. Uh, if I cancel, then the whole thing fails. It can't create that commit. If I reinsert the YubiKey, now let's try again. Now I need to unlock the card again by entering the pin. But now you see it's succeeded um, and there's a new commit there. And if I want to make another commit, uh, this commit was also signed with the YubiKey. Because the YubiKey is already unlocked, I don't have to re-enter the pin or anything. It will just allow me to sort of immediately sign all subsequent commits. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think that's it. Uh, that's the whole setup. Um, good luck with it. Hit me up if you have any problems or questions. I don't really know what I'm doing. I just managed to figure this much out. Uh, so I hope it works for you. And I hope this has been helpful. Bye.